Hello friends, it's Alora and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk through all of my reading for the summer of 2019. So this summer I read a total of 30 books, which I'm very proud about. And um, some of them I loved, some of them I really didn't. I feel like the overall theme, before I get into the video really, is that I've read a lot of books, but I haven't really fallen in love with any books lately. I've just kind of felt fairly eh about a lot of them and I don't necessarily know if that's the fault of the books or if that's just kind of where I am right now in life that maybe I'm just trying to consume too many things and so I'm not really fully appreciating any of them to the best of my ability anyway um, <laughs> I am wearing a summery dress for you even though it's now very autumnal here in Alaska which I'm so happy about. Before we go any further, I do want to point out that I am not the hugest fan of a five-star rating scale, but for the purposes of this video, in order to figure out what my top five books were for the season, war? War? <laughs> were for the season, I'm just going to give the book star ratings. And these might be slightly different than what I gave them in whatever wrap-up now that I've let the books and the thoughts that the books gave me sit for a little bit. All right, let's go. The first book that I read in June was The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, and this book I gave about a three and a half stars. The next book that I read was Blank Canvas, My So-Called Artist Journey by Akiko Higashimura. This is a manga that I gave a three stars. After that, I read To Build a Home, Poetry and Prose by Hina Mian, which I gave a 3.75 star. Then I listened on audio to Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. I gave that one five stars. Then I read Gracefully Grayson by Amy Polonsky, which I gave three stars. After that, I finished reading The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson, which I gave 4.25 stars. In July, I read The Crane Wife, by Patrick Ness, which I gave a 4.2 stars to also. Then I completed Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This one I gave a 5 star rating. That was followed up with Little Beach Street Bakery by Jenny Colgan. This one I only gave a 3 stars. After that I listened to the audiobook for Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett, which I gave 3.75 stars. Then I read The Bullet Journal Method by Ryder Carroll. This I gave a 4.25, 4.5 stars. Next was a graphic novel called The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This one I gave a 3.75 stars. After that, I read Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kagawakami. This one I gave four stars. Next, I listened to the audiobook for Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, which I gave four stars. After that, I listened to the audiobook for A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahara Mathi. That one I also gave a four star rating. Then I finished City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert, which I gave a three star rating. After that, I read the poetry collection called Graffiti by Savannah Brown. And this one I gave about a 3.5 star rating to. Finally, in July, I read Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger, and this one got about a 3.5 stars. The first book in August was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I gave this a 3.75 star rating. Then was In Other Words by Jhumpa Lahiri, which I gave three stars. After that, I listened to A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabos. I gave that about a three star also. Then I finished And I Darken by Kirsten White, which I gave 3.75 stars. Another 3.75 star read was Helium by by Rudy Francisco, and then I listened to The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins, which I only gave a three star, maybe 2.5 star. Then we had a good one, which was Normal People by Sally Rooney. To this, I gave a 4.5 star rating. After that was Pop Painting by Camilla De Erico. This is kind of hard to rate, but I gave it like a 4.5. After that was Emergency Contact by Mary H. K. Choi. This one I gave four stars. Then I listened to a Christina Lauren audiobook called My Favorite Half Night Stand, which I only gave a 2.5 star rating. After that was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This one received three stars from me. And finally, to wrap up my summer reading season was Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukagawa. To this I gave 3.75 stars. Okay, so let's talk about my top five books of the summer season. I do want to give a quick shout out to the Crane Wife by Patrick Ness because even though this didn't quite make my top five list, I still did really like it and I, I just adore Patrick Ness's writing style. I feel like he really creates a mythical, magical setting and I love the way in which he writes, so shout out for this one. Number five on my list of favorites for the summer season is The Bullet Journal Method by Ryder Carroll. This is a book that details his organizational method and what I really like about The Bullet Journal Method is that he doesn't just talk about how to do it. He talks about 
why to use his method. And he really goes into detail about how helpful it can be in your life. I did start bullet journaling this season, have been absolutely adoring it. I find it to be a very useful way to keep track of my life. And I love that you can make lists and then you can put them in the index so it doesn't disrupt the flow of your daily journal. It's just a really great method. His style of writing is very conversational and I would absolutely recommend this to anyone who is either starting to try to figure out how to organize their life or who wants to kind of up level a little bit. Number four on my list of favorite books of the season is The Wall of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. I have been continuing with the Mistborn series very slowly just because they're such thick books and they take me such a long time to get through and I've been focusing on shorter books recently quite honestly so that I can get to my 100 books for the year goal. Um, so I'm a little bit intimidated to read more of his books but this is the second book in the Mistborn trilogy and without really giving anything away one of our main characters is not present in this book and I really missed his presence so that's what kind of brought it down from a five star read for me but otherwise I really do like the way in which Brandon Sanderson writes it kind of blends into the background so that it's easy to read his work quickly and lots of exciting things happen the world expanded a great deal the characters were very aligned with what they would have done in the first book. I didn't feel like they made decisions just to advance the plot, so I really liked that. Overall, everyone knows that Brandon Sanderson is amazing at writing fantasy, so I concur. <laughs> My third favorite book of the season is Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is a book that follows two young people coming of age, starting to journey into adulthood and trying to figure out if their propensities and their mental health issues and their inner worlds are too terrible in order for them to lead normal lives. The author Sally Rooney is Irish, this is adult literary fiction, and I find her to be a superb psychological portraitist. She's really fantastic at delving into the inner worlds of these characters, kind of taking a deep look at the dark thoughts that we have alone at night. For that I definitely laud her. My second favorite book of the season is Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. Rachel Hollis is a women's motivational speaker. She's kind of like a female Tony Robbins. This is her second nonfiction book that really focuses on women and how they can succeed in the world and how they can balance family life with work life, how you can get your creative ideas off the ground. It basically takes away a lot of your excuses for not doing the things that you really want to be doing and that are calling to you and that are more like your purpose or your mission or part of that. She's really motivational and she also breaks down her advice into small chapters, has a lot of anecdotes, is very relatable and speaks to you kind of as though she were your older sister giving you advice. My number one book of the season, I just, I adored this book so much, is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. This is a graphic novel that's black and white with pink splashes. It follows this high schooler named Freddie who is head over heels in love with Laura Dean, but Laura Dean is honestly quite shitty. She's inconsiderate, she does not take Freddie's opinions and feelings into consideration, she comes and goes as she pleases, and despite all this, Freddie still wants to be with her. So even though she's engaged in this toxic relationship, she keeps coming back and she refuses to be the first one to walk away for good. This is a tale of friendship and how friendships can get really tangled and messy and how you can break the hearts of your friends when you're in these terrible toxic relationships. It's the story of coming to terms with who someone else is to you and whether or not you're okay with that, whether or not you can live with yourself if you choose to be around people who hurt you. It is so relatable in the sense that you don't have to have been in a toxic relationship for this to be relatable, but we all have people in our lives, whether that be a family member or a friend or a romantic partner who we know isn't good for us, who we know is bringing us down, who we know isn't supporting us, and who we know if we called them in the middle of the night, they probably wouldn't pick up the phone, they probably wouldn't be the one to come pick us up out of the bad situation, they're not going to be the one holding us as we're crying, you know, those kinds of people who aren't supporting you, you and who don't love you as much as you love them. It's so emotional, so touching, and I really appreciate how the topic of friendship was woven deeply within this story. Plus the artwork was bomb. 
Plus, of course, it's always wonderful to see more LGBTQ plus representation. It's absolutely amazing how the young adult genre has expanded in recent years to include lots of ethnicities, lots, lots of cultures, lots of sexual identities and gender identities. I really appreciate how much growing the genre has done and how it has broadened the landscape of what we see in young adult literature so okay friends thanks for hanging out with me today let me know down below what were some of your favorite summer reads were they typical summer like beachy reads or did you have some unexpected finds i'll see you all with another video very soon until then i'm sending you love